शिव शक्तुक्त यदि शक्त प्रभावित न चे देव देव नकुलकुशलस्पंदमी अतस्व आराध्यं हरिहर विरिशादिभी प्रणम स्तुम वुमकृतपुण्य प्रभवती नमस्ते Well, it's a new year and we're going to start a new series. This will be kind of short one, but very deep, huh? On the Saundarya Lahari. And actually just on the first verse of the Saundarya Lahari. And there are two links in the video description below. One is to the complete work along with the commentary and it's, it's extremely profound and advanced and uh, the other is of the chanting of the verses and uh, that's a, a nice video here on youtube so this prayer i mean it has the most wonderful attributes first of all it was only Uh, written a short time ago by Adi Shankaracharya uh, about 1500 years ago but it's a real vedic classic because it succinctly describes the ontological position of shakti and this is very important because most people don't understand they take shakti as just another deity in the vedic pantheon uh, but is not really so Uh, and we'll get into all those details as we go into the meaning of this extremely profound verse. But in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the structure. Uh, first of all, the meter of Saundarya Lahari is called Shikharini, Shikharini Matra, and it's a 17-beat cycle. <laughs> Here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Da 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 da. Four, five, six. Da 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 da. Four, five, six. Like that. So, the whole thing is chanted according to this meter. and i'll chant the first verse the first shloka or actually just the first line of the first shloka to give you an idea of how it is in practice 1 2 3 4 shiva shaktya yukto yari bhavati shakta prabhavitum see like that so the whole thing is is chanted to this very sophisticated meter and it's also in a beautiful raga raga purvi now raga purvi let me just get my little tanpura thing working here raga purvi is an evening raga sare ga ma pa dha ni sa ni dha pa So a typical melody in this raga will be like pa ma pa da ni pa da ma da pa ga ri sa. So this is a beautiful. evening raga because the sunset is the time when she is celebrated especially on the new moon day so the raga purvi is used for the recitation and you heard it in the introduction to this video that was me chanting but uh, if you follow the link you'll hear some really good chanting <laughs> so what's the meaning 
ಶಿವಾಶಕ್ತಾಯುಕ್ತೋ ಯರಿಭವತಿ ಶಕ್ತ ಪ್ರಭಾವಿತು ನ ಚೇದೇವಂ ದೇವೋ ನ ಕುಲಕುಶಲ ಸ್ಪಂಡಿತು ಮಿ ಅಥಸ್ವ ಆರಾಧ್ಯಂ ಹರಿಹರ ವಿರಿಂಶಿಭಿರಿ ಪ್ರಣಾಂಥಂ ಸ್ತೋತು ವಾ ಕಥಂ ಆಕೃತ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭಾವತಿ wonderful wonderful beautiful verse only when conjoined with shakti thyself can shiva earn the privilege to become ishwara overlord otherwise he is not even able to stir o oh, goddess you are worthy of being adored even by hari hara virincha and others therefore how can one who has acquired no merit dare either to salute or praise thee beautiful shloka <laughs> and deep 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 meaning well, what does it mean exactly only when conjoined with shakti can shiva earn the privilege to become ishwara what does that mean shiva is the static absolute the state of shivam is brahman huh? where there is no duality that means no space no time no motion no action no doer no object no consciousness no nothing <laughs> because to even to have nothing you have to be in contrast with something <laughs> and there isn't anything in brahman except pure unconditioned objectless awareness so this state of shivam or brahman is static nothing ever happens is no changes huh but within brahman something arises duality or the appearance of duality actually there is no duality <laughs> but there appears to be duality and all kinds of changes and actions and qualities and you know phenomena <laughs> that is shakti so how can shiva be ishwara the controller the overlord unless he has something to lord it over <laughs> or to control that is the creation and the creation is also shakti but according to our acharya shankar acharya none of this means that there is really duality because shakti is one with shiva that means all the phenomena all the creation all the stuff that happens all these different beings everything that we perceive and so on is simply an illusion maya okay and this is one of her thousand names maha maya and another one is vishnu maya so in this way shakti creates an illusion or an appearance in brahman which remember is pure awareness huh? the first illusion is that there is an object therefore there can be consciousness consciousness is when you have a subject an object and the awareness revealing uh, uh, first of all uh, illuminating and then revealing it for what it is but consciousness can only exist when there's a subject object duality so she also creates that illusion and then on top of it all she is action motion the different qualities beginning with the the three basic qualities of existence goodness passion and ignorance sattva rajas and tamas these are called the gunas or the qualities 
So Shakti is the basis of all manifestation, of all being outside of the absolute being of Brahman. And of course, all the beings, including you and me. So all this is actually just illusion. <laughs> As you'll discover, if you meditate on her and she reveals herself to you. This happened to me in 1984. <laughs> so if she reveals or when she reveals herself to you, you will see that actually everything is one. There is no duality. The duality is simply an appearance, but it's an appearance within Brahman, consciousness or actually awareness. This is the great mystery. Huh? So I just want to run through this shloka one more time to get familiar with it and give you an idea of the meanings of the words so that you're not in a mental fog because of not understanding the meanings of the Sanskrit. Shaktya yukto yadi bhavati Only if yoked with shakti. Shiva devo means even Lord Shiva. Shaktaha has the power. Prabhavitum to create the world. Nache devang if not so yoked, na kushalaha, he is not capable. Spanditumapi, even to make a move. Kalu, isn't it so? Ataha, thus, katang prabhavati, how is it possible? Akrita punyaha, for one who has not accrued any spiritual merit, Pranantum, to do prostrations to. Stotungva, or to praise by hymns. Tvam, you. Aradhyang harihara virinchadi bhirapi, who are worshipped even by Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma, and the like. Hari means Vishnu. Hara means Shiva. And virinchi means Brahma. Adibhir means and all the rest of the gods. So even the great triumvirate, huh, the Hindu trinity, worship Shakti. Even Shiva worships Shakti. What to speak of the other gods? Virinchi, by the way, is another name of Brahma. So this shloka, this beautiful shloka, Shiva Shaktya Yukto Yaribhavati Shakta Prabhavitum Nache Devang Devo Nakalukushala Spanditumapi Atastvang Aradhyang Harihara Virinchadi Bhirapi Pranantung Stotung Va Katamakrita Punya Prabhavati only when conjoined with Shakti, thyself, can Shiva earn the privilege to become Ishwara, overlord. Otherwise, he is not even able to stir. O oh, goddess, you are worthy of being adored even by Hari, Hara, Virincha, and others. Therefore, how can one who has acquired no merit dare either to salute or praise thee. And this we see, huh? that a person who has no spiritual merit, no punya, who has not done karma yoga and bhakti yoga, sometimes they try to jump up to jnana, but they don't make it. <laughs> they fall down. And actually, it is written in several places in the scriptures that one worships Shakti in one's last lifetime. Because Shakti can award moksha. Shakti can award liberation. She is maya. She is the trap of illusion. So therefore, she can also release you from the trap. 
So if you are fortunate, if you have done your homework, <laughs> if you have the, the background to be released from Maya, then you also have the privilege to worship her. Otherwise, you'll think, oh, there's no need. This, it's not really uh, important. You know, I don't have to do this. I can just sit and meditate and realize the Brahman. No, <laughs> it doesn't happen. And we see it, practically speaking. In Tiruvannamalai, every year, thousands of Westerners come and they, they visit Raman Ashrama and they try to jump up to this uh, platform of jnana without doing any karma yoga, without doing any bhakti yoga. Uh, they want to simply jump into meditation. It happens in Buddhism a lot too, without any background, without any qualification, without any punya. And because of this, they're not successful. Sometimes they lose their mind, they go crazy because of offenses against her. So it's very important that we recognize her position and worship Shakti sincerely. And then we are able to get the benefit of, well, so many things. Om Tatsa. Om Harihi Aum.